Hey everyone, as every active real estate investor is well aware, the interest rate climate is being dictated by the Federal Reserve. And the principal factor they're considering as they make those decisions is inflation. So last week, I took a dive into CPI inflation to get a better handle on the metric that's driving so many real estate investment decisions. To understand CPI, you have to look at the components, the pieces that make up the inflation number. And you have to look at how much weight the BLS places on each of those components. CPI includes a variety of things in its basket of goods, things like apparel, recreation, education, medical care, food and beverages, and transportation. But the biggest component of the consumer price index is housing costs, which account for 45% of the total. Now, that seems a bit out of proportion to me. I mean, on average, US households only spend 25 to 30% of their income on housing. But when you dig one layer deeper into the housing costs, you find that 8% of the total CPI inflation number is basically driven by rent growth. But another 27% of CPI is driven by something called owner's equivalent rent. Now, you may have seen this term come up in the media recently because a lot of economists aren't big fans of owner's equivalent rent. They argue that it's not really something that people experience. Owner's equivalent rent is a hypothetical modeled number. It's supposed to represent what a homeowner would have to pay to rent the home that they live in. And it's based on the results of a renter survey that's conducted by the Census Bureau that tabulates about 5,000 rent surveys each quarter. But there's a latency problem here. Most renters are on an annual lease, so their rent doesn't change month to month. It changes once a year. So it could take up to a whole year for the census's renter survey to capture the actual movement of rents. That means when rents go up really fast, like they did in 2021, that escalation took longer to show up in the inflation metrics. Then, as rent growth flattened in 2022 and 2023, the inflation from 2021 was starting to show up in the inflation readings. It was distorting the information the Fed was working with. In other words, when rents go up fast, inflation is underreported. Then if rent growth slows down very quickly, inflation is overreported. Basically, the Federal Reserve is setting rate policies based in part on old data. They're driving by looking in the rearview mirror. Now, some economists are advocating that we stop using owner's equivalent rent in the inflation measurement. And if that were done, the current CPI inflation rate would be about 2.4% instead of the current reading of 3.3%. But here's another idea. Instead of using a survey of renters' actual rents to calculate inflation, a methodology that was set up in 1981 when computers were in their infancy and there was no internet, maybe the BLS should be using asking or effective rents from the numerous data services that are now available. If they used, for example, Zillow to calculate the owner's equivalent rent, then today's CPI inflation would be about 3%. If they also used more current data to calculate the rent of primary residence inflation, then the current CPI inflation reading would be about 2.6%. And if headline inflation were down to 2.6%, then we'd probably already be cutting rates. But here's the good news. We already know what's going to happen with the housing component of CPI. We already have the rent data that's months, if not a full year ahead of the information the Federal Reserve is using to make their decisions. Apartment rents only went up by 1.2% in the last 12 months. So housing inflation should continue to fall. And as an investor, knowing what's ahead gives you an advantage. Investors always need to look forward. They need to keep their eyes on the horizon.